Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Torolf's Path. So, uh, I'm recording this at night, so I'm going to be a little quieter, but uh, oh my, this might be a spicy, spicy episode, guys. So please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes, and let's jump right in. And ooh, might have to break out the uh, creative sensor bars for this one, boys and girls. Let's do it. All right. <clears throat> All right. Oh. What were you saying, Troll? Hear anything? No, nothing. Suddenly, someone knocks on our door. I jump away from Torolf, startled, and the tiger almost falls back on the table. Lake turns towards us, a look of pure horror on his face. We stand frozen, but my heart is beating like an alarm bell, and I'm afraid that whoever's on the other side might hear it. Torolf composes himself and extends his paw towards the door. The lake crosses the room in two jumps and grabs his arm firmly. Torolf gives a stern look, but budges and just leans against the wall. We hear nothing more from the corridor. Why would you open right any why would you open anyone right now? If it was a friend, they just sent us a message. It surely was a teacher, likely bringing some useful information. Maybe he could have shed some light on the situation. Spare me the puns. Do you have Travis's phone number? No, I barely know him. Message Oregon if you want to contact someone. Yeah, good idea. I bet they're still in the common room having fun together. Oh, I got a message from him, actually. Where did you go? We're in the cafeteria with the other students. Don't do anything stupid. What are you cats doing? <laughs> Looks like they're safe. That's good. We're all safe, Lake. Nothing ever happens up here, believe me. I'll take a look at the corridor, fine? I guess. It's almost pitch black outside. Though to our right, there's a beam of light cutting across the common room. The light shifts and shines at us, a single bright point nearly blinding us. Someone with a torch. The hair on my forearms all stand up. Oh, it's Coach. <laughs> oh, the power is back. Good. Were you there the whole time? I knocked on your door and nobody answered. Oh, we must have been sulking and didn't hear it. Sorry, Coach. That's fine. Nothing happened. And now we have the power back anyway. Now, excuse me, I'll go to the reception to get some updates on the situation. Most of the students are in the cafeteria right now, in case you'd want to join them. And Coach walks away, disappearing behind the corner. So, what do we do? We come back to our room. We have a lion to calm down. <laughs> oh, I love that animation, it's so good. Ha! Huh, that's not it. If I wanted, I could live abroad. It would be even cheaper. Norway is easily one of the most expensive places to live. The only two more expensive places I can think of are Switzerland and Iceland. Iceland? Have you ever been there? No, but I'd love to. I've heard it's stunning, and they have some great bands. You, Carvin? <clears throat> you, Carvin? No, I didn't travel much, to be honest. My parents aren't huge fans. Not everyone is hungry for new experiences, which is a shame. They're good for everyone. Different people, different perspectives, I guess. Why did you stay here, then? It's a combination of factors, but foremost, it's comfortable here. What's a better place to live than Norway? And I like men. It's the 21st century. I don't want to have to deal with intolerance and bigotry anymore. You know, back like 15 years ago, the world was a different place. And between different countries, the differences are even more visible. I had my first partner when I was 19, like you are now. But I knew I'd be looking for a boyfriend, not a girlfriend, since I was at least 15. You're younger, so you might not relate to it as that much, but since I understand that, fear was a constant part of my experience. Fear of coming out. Fear of being judged. An extreme case of fear of being assaulted. Fear for the future. Fear of my family's reaction to all this. It was a constant companion. What was that? That was a weird noise. Once when I was riding a tram and observing people in the city center, I understood something, I understood something else. That the most that the most people I don't that the most people I see don't share this fear. Something that I considered an inseparable part of the existence uh, was to my was just my own, not a collective experience. So having understood that and having identified the root causes, I decided to shed this feeling whatsoever. To live without fear. Here, it's easy. Maybe the easiest it can be. Maybe apart from some gay neighborhoods in the U.S. Anyway, I think I'll be going. I'll finish the cake in my room. Oh, have a good night. Oh, wait for me. I'll be going too. I'm done with my food. 
Lake looks at his plate solemnly, barely having touched his food. I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Good night. 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 Oh, Lake wanting some of that D. Torolf lets me in first. The closed laptop is laying on his bed, but other than that, nothing has changed here since my last visit here. Maybe apart from the fact that the room smells even more of him now. Or maybe I'm getting more attuned to his scent. Torolf comes in and puts the plate down on my desk. You can have my cake if you want. I'll have an apple later. Like yesterday, I thought that he either wanted me to have his cake because he knew I enjoyed mine, or that he just wanted to be seen as health conscious. Maybe leave me a bite. It looks good. Though maybe I was right. You sure you don't want it? I do, but I'm better off without it. Too much sugar in the evening and I'd have a hard time falling asleep. I nod, grabbing his slice of cake. Thanks. Hmm. Do you want some bourbon with that to spice up the evening? Oh, right, we didn't get to drink in the common room after all. I'm not really a big fan of alcohol, but right now, sitting with Torolf... You can pour me some. Torolf fetches the bottle and two glasses, pouring us both some of the amber-colored liquid. He passes me the glass. The bourbon smells of alcohol, mostly, burning my nostrils. At least it's not the whiskey. The whiskey's used sock stink. Torolf raises his glass, click, clinking it with mine before taking a sip. To freedom! I follow, tasting the oily liquid. To my surprise, it's not disgusting, and I swallow it easily. Hey, it's not bad. Why would it be? Who would want to drink something that's not good? And don't ask me. Ask people who drink whiskey, but generally when someone treats me with alcohol, it's awful. There are good whiskeys, too, but whiskey in general is an acquired taste, like salmiaki. Salmiaki are delicious, though. Most of the world would disagree. My point is, even if you don't like something, it doesn't mean it's bad. Hmm. You know, I really like it here. I know you're less excited about this, you grew up in, a, in this landscape. But I want to see the fjords. Do you have that in the itinerary? I'm not sure. The closest one is within walking distance. And I might have grown up here, but they're still breathtaking. I'd like to see them again, too. What do you mean by walking distance? Maybe two hours on paw? Oof! I logged more daily when I was still working. Walking to your workplace? No, I usually took a bike or a tram if I wanted to read a book. Programming is way more exhausting than it looks from the outside because of the sheer amount of decisions to be taken daily. And to that, all the meetings and calls, some overtime. I was often leaving the office completely exhausted mentally, and walks were the best antidote for that. I look at the bottom of my glass where only lacing remains. More? Mmm, I don't know. This was strong. I can already feel the alcohol, even though I had one small glass. How much alcohol does it have? 45%. Phew! Yeah, I think I've had enough. Spicing the evening up sounded good. I don't think I want to dull my senses. I lean on him and he extends his paw to pet my head. He smells clean and fresh even after a whole day. I have no idea how he does that. Maybe he took a shower before the supper. I think I can smell a hint of sandalwood and citruses on him. A rumble arises in my throat, low and needy. Oh my. Letting my body act on its own, I slide my paw underneath Torolf's oversized tank top and press it to his fuzzy belly. Beneath the silky fur, his skin is hot to the touch. Torolf leans back and sighs. My paws explore his torso, moving up to his pecs, and he straightens up, flexing them for me. His chest vibrates with his rumble. Garvin? Hmm? Instead of replying, Torolf leans in. Our snout's touch and he licks mine. Then his tongue slips inside and he kisses me gently. Oh my. Oh me, oh my. I'm gonna get it. Damn it! What? <laughs> what? Aw, shucks. Who the fuck says shucks anymore? Damn it! Ah. Uh, okay. Oh, you guys are so bad. Ah, uh, okay, guys, this was a somewhat shorter episode of Don Chorus, Torolf's Path. I think I am done with Don Chorus. Guys, if there is a way to pursue, um, to pursue the cat, I forget his name, Klaus, uh, let me know. I I'm very interested. I don't think you can pursue, uh, the Tanuki. I don't think you can pursue Travis yet. I, I don't know. Guys, I if you can pursue both of them, uh, let me know in the comments, please, and I will try and do a Let's Play of their, of their respective routes. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!